so Jacobson is not supposed to have anything to do with my MRI test but he trained the tech Manuel uh, also known as Antonio Makaya Wong Papel to do a complex needle insertion into the ulnar artery see now what he said is my regular injection failed and he had to go look for an alternate site for an injection but really nothing happened the the normal injection was fine and the test was going along just fine there was no problem with the test he just made the excuse to do this extra injection and so 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 after getting this needle and catheter set up in my left hand when I went inside the machine Jacobson used I guess they had like a tube or something set up you know so I never even you know while I was sealed inside Jacobson would come into the room and he was able to force water into my brain now this causes swelling uh, unconsciousness and then death but with his skill he was able to harness out a 50 minute period of unconsciousness and now you got to see the sex act the sex act was a show the sexual contact was done well that's what these people like all these people they kind of do like different kind of shows so this and I think now I think a a variety of possibly sex acts went on but one thing for certain um, the primary sexual act uh, the contact was done by two women and the sexual act was done by a large group of men almost all in their mid 50s now most of these men are doctors and officials so most of these men are doctors and officials with the giant local nonprofit health systems uh, in Nova Johns Hopkins MedStar Virginia Commonwealth University and Adventist Healthcare but also there were some government officials who were one of the men and this includes J Thomas Manger the third who is the police chief of Montgomery County Maryland so this kind of this you know so this sp this sprawling sex crime fantasy was easy to do even though they these people do like smaller versions of this crime within like hospitals and it doesn't really include all these other extra people and this was actually not even at a hospital this is just like a regular standard uh, outpatient uh, imaging facility and this includes all these people and to get all these people together um, and have them have the the confidence it really helped out having the police chief right there doing the crime with them I mean this is just like you know if, if someone tells you uh, you can go and rob the bank and the and the police chief will come with you and rob the bank with you you know that makes it a lot easier now and, and of course these women are kind of and I think they're kind of um, now although these men they are mainly at the high end of the medical profession being like doctors you know surgeons and being high level officials earning millions of dollars these women were like at the low end whereas in the California case at least the women were nurses these women are more like the receptionist type right? so one is an, an unidentified white woman and she's about 29 30 she literally you know you know the the whole situation literally matches the california case in the california case the male neuro the male brain surgeon is 57 and here most of the white male doctors are in their mid 50s and there one of the women is age 29 and the other is age 42 they kind of match here too so the one who's age i guess who's age 29 or about there or, or or even low 30s she's unidentified and I'm guessing she's like a medical assistant which is like a low-level position and she works uh, with dr. Jacobson's the back practice offices in Washington DC now the other one I know for sure who she is she's Michelle Miller and she's like 42 
And what happened is they both got dolled up in advance. Okay, so they had an extreme makeover. And so it looks like they went to a spa and got all these things done. And most noticeable is this Michelle Miller, because who normally looks very bad. I even saw her at a later time. It doesn't even look like she bathes. But on that day, yeah, the extreme makeover with the hair, skin, and the clothes. So, and, and this was going to be the show with this coma-like thing. Um, the body's struggling to survive and stays asleep. And so what they do is they use a violent stimulus to get me to participate in having sex. Now, of course, this is kind of the, the same crime that these people have been doing to all those women, which is um, by causing a brain injury, uh, you, you, know, you get that level of, of, of consciousness where uh, with a violent stimulus, you participate in sex acts and then you have no memory. So that's exactly uh, what went on. So, so really, it's already a crime of great violence because they are causing this horrible brain injuries. But also within that crime of great violence, you know, they're getting this kind of show. It kind of looks like, you know, a a stand, you know, a sex crime with hitting and violence and resistance. But really, you know, it's not that kind. Well, you know, but they're really what's going on is the body is trying to stay alive and the body doesn't even know about sex or anything the body is just trying to stay alive so 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 you know if you the so the patient kind of fights back so usually it's like uh, it, in a good way when you have the severely brain injured person uh, if like the nurse wants to give the patient some food they do use some kind of physical stimulus and violent stimulus to kind of get them to wake up and participate and eat a little bit of food or something like that but you know and they greatly limit it because the brain really needs so 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 you can see kind of what's going on what kind of show they are getting you know i'm not really uh it's not like you know they're really taking it they're not really taking advantage of someone who's who's well they're taking advantage of someone who's like uh, injured, brain injured at the scene of an accident and who's temporarily, profoundly retarded. So now we know what these men did. These men enjoyed it so much and this explains why there was a, str a strong mop up on the floor that I woke up to. And it really took the Santa Cruz case recently to suggest that there are, well, I, all I saw there were videos, but the Santa Cruz case uh, leads me to think that the women themselves, uh, you know, are looking at that video right now and continuing to gratify themselves. And that's one of the reasons they got this extreme makeover, because they want to see themselves uh, looking good in, in the video. And this is kind of how... You know, this is kind of like a sex cult or like a group or whatever. And so they watch it and they call the men and they tell them, the, yeah, they enjoyed watching it. And, they, and, and the thing is, this is not like the old days where the women kind of reluctantly participate or they're just kind of going along to get something else from the men. Here, as we saw in the Santa Cruz case, the women are really enjoying it. I mean, they really want to do it. And that's what I learned in this case, too. These two women, they really wanted to do it. And Dr. Kulkarni, I guess she, uh, you know, she wasn't interested in that kind of thing. But I think Dr. Kulkarni played along and she also uh, let these men know that she was being aroused by these things. But, you know, I just don't see her. Uh, actually being that type of of a, of a person, but she just went along and played. Now, Dr. Kulkarni did not show up here, and, you know, 
If she were really aroused by that kind of thing, Dr. Kulkarni should have shown up and done the stuff herself, <laughs> right? So, but Dr. Kulkarni did not show up. But I think after the fact, even uh, I guess she reluctantly watches the video and and she also tells these guys that she's aroused, and that's how it works. It's kind of like a group thing, so they kind of they they pull energy off of each other, kind of thing. So, but. The thing is, they were unsatisfied there, see, with the expert Jacobson involved and with my body recovering well, I would not have noticed anything until a stroke some 20 years down the road and made no connection. But a major part of the sex crime was to watch, uh, to enjoy watching me suffer from the permanent brain injury that they created. Jacobson ramped up the water. Miraculously, the water wouldn't hold in the brain. So much water was used as damage was occurring to the large veins that returned blood from the brain to the heart. The coincidental stroke the saying that it's a coincidental stroke that kind of an explanation was lost Michelle Miller in a recorded phone call had a major slip major slip up she says something which could only be interpreted as an expression of their disappointment that I walked out of their office and that I should feel gratitude then she really stepped in it by going back and rephrasing it uh, and to try to say she meant something else. Then a, a variety of uh, other evidence also shows this intent and shows that they were certain that by an erosive process, uh, hydrocephalus and other uh, catastrophic ends would come as soon as the same day. So we could say what happened basically, we could kind of sum it up as the uh, events of the Roman Colosseum uh, joining up with the events of the Roman orgy and anyway you know these kind of men you know if you look at like the Stanford sex crime case and the Vanderbilt sex crime case both were like this BSDM type crimes where they wanted to you know do crimes against uh, you know dead sick looking women and in both cases, the white guys who did the crime, they were young white guys, like 18, 20, 19 or whatever, or about that age. And both those young white guys, apparently athletes even at that, uh, they were so dysfunctional, sexually dysfunctional, you know, during the time. And I think this is kind of what motivates these people too, kind of because they're really sexually dysfunctional and they're just looking for something bigger to, you know, ho you know, try to get them aroused in some way. And I think, so with these doctors, what's going on is they're committing these crimes to like, I guess they picked, you know, when the, so when the cheerleader comes to their uh, hospital. Uh, they do these horrible crimes to those women, and they kind of, and they get all the women uh, uh, working in the hospital with them to also participate, I guess, and help out. And so then, and so then they can't, you know, when that high is not enough. And since these are like bizarre crimes, so it doesn't really follow that the next step up from going after the the cheerleader is going after the Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, you know, because these are bizarre weirdos. So for them, the next big thing is like going after like three and five year old children and grow and going after men. You know, that's the kind of freak. That's the kind of things that these people do.